Coming up, the latest twist in home renovation scams is a high-stakes con that could leave you homeless. Also, it's one of a parent's worst nightmares, an abusive nanny who harms your child. And Americans line up to save money at the bank with the lowest credit card rate in the nation. This is Steals and Deals with Janice Lieberman. Welcome. We would like to warn you about a new scam sweeping the country. It's called equity theft, and the results can be devastating. Victims are left with mountains of debt and are in danger of losing their homes. David Horowitz has more from our Los Angeles Bureau. David? People posing as legitimate contractors and loan brokers are going through major cities like Los Angeles, usually in the minority communities, offering homeowners loans to improve their properties. But once they get their hands on the money, they abandon the work, sell the note to another lender, and leave the homeowner to pay off the worthless loan. In many cases, the victims can't pay off their mortgage, and they lose their homes through foreclosure. Betty Young of South Los Angeles refinanced her home to pay for remodeling. It was the beginning of a nightmare. Betty, this man said he was going to finance your house, refinance it. How was he going to do it? Well, he made me a loan, and he said that he would uh, refinance my house and that uh, he himself would do the repairs on the house out of these funds that he was supposed to acquire for me. He has received his fees. The progress have received their fees. I received one $1,000 out of this whole loan. $1,000 out of loan? That's all. And what have they done? Well, they wrecked my house, really. What did it look like before? Well, before they wrecked it, uh, it was in pretty good condition. But afterwards, all of my windows are gone. They've taken all of that out. The floors have been uh, ripped. The walls have been ripped. Um, the inside components of the house are gone also. So uh, it's no way that I have the money to refurbish this house now. Uh, also, along with that, I've got a letter from the county stating that I have to do something with this house. I have no monies to do anything with this house. But what about the repairs to the house that he was supposed to make to bring it up to code? I don't know. I don't know. She now has a uh, $65,000 first, a silent $31,000 second, uh, a gutted house, um, and very little else. Is this a scam? Sure, it's a scam. But it is a matter of it is not only Betty Young, but the whole, mainly the, 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 the uh, South Central neighborhoods have been targeted for that right now. And th because these are good properties, they're big properties, and they know who's weak. And of course, you're going to pounce on the weak one. And this is what's going on right now. But this case that you're talking about, it's very sad. The woman has five children. Uh, the property was torn, and it, it was a guy that she trusted and can't get a hold of him now. Gloria Young now has a lawsuit pending against those involved in this scam. But even if she wins her suit, getting her money back and rebuilding her house could take years. Meanwhile, she's left with no home to live in and a huge mortgage payment hanging over her head. Tomorrow night, I'll look at some ways she can fight back and avoid becoming a victim of this kind of ripoff. And that's it from Los Angeles. Janice? Thanks, David. Well, David, there's a new movie out that has some parents worried about the people they hire to care for their children. It's called The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. It's just Hollywood fiction, but the fact is, in real life, things do go wrong, sometimes very wrong. Tracy Bryan has more. Oh, hi. I'm Peyton Flanders. Hi. I, I was coming about the nanny position. Oh. The Hand That Rocks the Cradle, a nanny nightmare shaking parents' faith in real-life babysitters. John Lewis's worst fears turned all too real when he and his wife, suspecting the abuse of their two-year-old daughter, set up a hidden camera when the babysitter was there. John and I will probably live this nightmare forever. It is important that uh, whenever you are thinking about hiring someone to watch over your most valuable commodity, that you do look for someone who is trained who is educated 
and check their references and do everything as thorough as possible. And Jamie Lee Samonti heads up the nation's oldest and largest nanny college in the United States, located here in Sacramento. How is my personality going to influence the personality of the children that I work with? Instructors here say parents should approach the hiring of an in-home child care provider much as they would any professional, such as a doctor or lawyer. Insist on training and check them out thoroughly. Dr. Susan Andrews Blanchett, who works 48 to 120 hours a week, felt overwhelmed trying to check into all the backgrounds of people who called after she placed an ad in the paper for a nanny. It was very difficult to investigate somebody's background. I mean, as far as I was concerned, I didn't have the time to do that. Um, so I needed some kind of assurances that these people had been through training, um, that somebody had looked into these various things with them. Your cookies? Huh? Cookies time. Norice yeah. Bustamante, a graduate of the California Nanny School, cost the Andrews a $1,500 finder's fee. But the Andrews say the ease of mind is well worth the cost. It's like she's always been there, as far as I'm concerned. It's like she's always been like a part of our family. Parents work every day, and she's alone with me all day. And um, I feel uh, I give to her um, part of my love, because she loves me so much. Dominic, come here. <laughs> give me a heart. So if it's the right hand, the hand that rocks the cradle can lend real comfort to a home. I'm Tracy Bryan for NBC News. Experts suggest you investigate the nanny's agency with child care authorities in your area. They also recommend spending a day at the agency to see how they screen job candidates. Also check the nanny's references, even if they're overseas. Ask direct questions about the nanny's personality and performance. And finally, rely on your own instincts. If anything feels wrong about the choice, keep on looking. Something may be wrong for those who try to diet. Less than 5% of people who try to lose weight will reach their goal. But what's even more disturbing is some diets could end in a medical disaster. Darian Ward has more. We cheered when Oprah shed more than 60 pounds of fat before our eyes and squeezed into a pair of size 10 Calvins. And then we sighed and said, I told you so, and she gained all the weight back and more. But the odds were stacked against her. Oprah had a 95% chance of failure. Last October, the Federal Trade Commission accused Optifast, the same liquid diet that Oprah promoted, as well as Metafast and Ultrafast, of misleading advertisements about the safety and long-term success of liquid diets. The FTC said these diet programs failed to disclose either the health risk associated with them or the need for physician monitoring to minimize these risks. And under an agreement with the FTC, the three companies agreed to change their advertisements to reflect documented facts. The potential for problems is great with these and other low-calorie diets. They can cause all sorts of problems, including heart attacks, strokes, kidney infections, irregular heartbeats, circulation problems, gallbladder disease, and loss of protein and minerals. One weight loss program at St. Joseph's Hospital also uses a liquid diet. Within the last four years, they've even had two patients develop gallstones. People who go into these fasting type of programs are usually 40 or more pounds overweight, and over 50% of them will have gallstones or sludge or something before they even come into the program, but they're unaware of it because they don't have any symptoms. The toughest part of dieting is not losing the weight, but keeping it off. So what's the best way to lose weight? Well, there are studies that say people with more than 40 pounds to lose need to see a rapid weight loss in order to keep them from getting discouraged and quitting. But for the rest of the population, average weight loss should be no more than three pounds a week, and calories should be no fewer than 1,200 a day. Reducing fat, reducing sugar, increasing fiber in their foods, those are all the same kinds of diets that are recommended by the American Heart Association, the American Diabetes Association. And something you probably already know about, exercise, about three to four times a week. It's one of the best ways to lose weight and keep it off. And here's something else to think about. 
A study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that the risk of dying from heart disease is about 70% higher in men and women whose weight fluctuates than in those whose weight remains steady. Think about it the next time you embark on a new diet. Darian Ward for NBC News. You can also drop a few pounds worrying about your taxes. So if you would rather get some help than go it alone, we'll tell you how. Stay with us. I want to show you why my Dirt Devil is the world's best-selling corded hand vacuum. Okay, Sam. Now, the toughest test for any vacuum is pit air. So I gave my Dirt Devil a strong motor and a revolving brush, just like an upright. And if it's powerful enough to clean up this mess, imagine what it can do with a dirty carpet. You could say Dirt Devil is man's best friend. Well, almost. <laughs> so get a Dirt Devil and put the power of an upright in the palm of your hand. We come from a land where the welcome home can make the journey worthwhile. So it's not surprising that our airline has earned the reputation for making travelers feel at home all over the world. While some would say it's just the Australian spirit to go further, others know that spirit simply as Qantas. Disney Channel exclusive. Take during a triumphant Into the Light World Tour, Gloria Estefan reflects on a career that has spanned tragedy and triumph. I was so anxious to get out there on the stage and show people that I was all right. A world television event that can only be found on the Disney Channel. Gloria Estefan, Going Home. Premiering during the Disney Channel's free preview, January 31st through February 3rd. What's the worst part of treating your worst colds? A cold medicine that leaves me spacey. Well, it's the cold medicine that can zonk me out. I hate that. It's like I'm off in the ozone somewhere. Groggy, spacey. Introducing Sudafed Severe Cold Formula. If it could help stop the cough and the fever, but not stop me from getting to work, that'd be great. The first Sudafed cough, cold, and flu tablet, and it has nothing but maximum strength ingredients? All that and it won't knock me out? Perfect. New Sudafed Severe Cold Formula. Maximum strength without drowsiness. They say you can please some of the people all of the time, and all of the people some of the time. But you can't please all of the people all of the time. Or can you? Special Accord leases are now available. See your nearest Honda dealer for details. We're the Dolans inviting you to join us here on CNBC for some smart money ideas. Whether it's stocks, bonds, taxes, or investments in general, join us with your questions and for expert advice. That's at 6 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. right here on CNBC. Every year, many of us scramble to file our income taxes before April 15th. But if you're the type who likes to be prepared or if you're expecting a refund, you might want to start thinking about those forms now. Alice Lazar is here with some advice on how to find someone who will help you out. Yeah. There's no reason to lose sleep over this because there are plenty of people out there offering help at a price, of course, so here's what you'll find. Now, there are actually four types of services available. The least expensive are national chains like H&R Block that hire people only on a seasonal basis. Next are enrolled agents who must have worked at least five years as an auditor either privately or for the IRS. They must take classes every year on the latest rules and regulations. Now, slightly more expensive is the public accountant, who is anyone in the practice of accountancy, public accountancy, that is, with a no minimum education or testing requirements. And the most expensive tax, pre tax preparers are certified public accountants or CPAs. They must pass rigorous qualifying exams and annual refresher courses every year. So how do you know which one of those to choose? 
choose? It all depends on what your requirements are. If, you, if you're not itemizing your deductions, you have a basic form, you can go to a national chain. They'll charge you a minimum amount of money and you'll get, out, you'll get your taxes filed fairly easily. If you have complicated returns with either businesses or investments, we would suggest you going to a CPA who can really give you the best service. It's more expensive, but it's the best service. Well, so we've been seeing so many promotions for getting your money back right away, instant tax refund. Good idea? Not worth it. What they do is two things. They'll, they have two services. One is a computerized service where they actually file your, your return electronically with the IRS. It saves you a couple of weeks and they charge $25 to $40 to do this. I don't think it's worth it for two weeks. The second type of service is where they actually give you a loan based upon the, the, the refund that they think you will get back. And if you annualize the interest rates, interesting, they'll charge you 30 or 40 percent on an annual basis for that money. It speeds up the process again, maybe two or three weeks. Bottom line is it's really not worth it. Wait the extra month and don't pay those extra fees. You don't have to. Listen, what if you need some help? with filing your forms, but you can't afford any of these services. Well, Is there, there any are, options? Yeah, there are options. In fact, there are many programs funded by the IRS to assist the elderly and the poor. First, tax counseling for the elderly offers free services to taxpayers who are 60 years or older and they are available nationwide. They'll also make home visits to shut-ins and the disabled. For more information, you can contact your local IRS office or the American Association of Retired Persons. Next, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, or VITA, is available to help low-income elderly non-English speaking and the disabled and you can also get their help by contacting your local IRS office. Melissa, have you filled out your taxes yet? I have not but I'm organizing all my papers Janice and that's one last tip make sure you're real organized before you walk into any of these services and you'll save money in the save long money run. that way. Absolutely. Thanks very much for saving us money today <laughs> Alyssa Lazar and when we return to Steals and Deals we'll have more help on how to find the cheapest credit card in America. Stay with us. Steals and Deals, sponsored in part by the Disney Channel, the finest in family entertainment. Get on your feet. A Disney Channel exclusive. Stand up and take some action. Take during a triumphant Into the Light World Tour, Gloria Estefan reflects on a career that has spanned tragedy and triumph. I was so anxious to get out there on the stage and show people that I was all right. A world television event that can only be found on the Disney Channel. Gloria Estefan, going home. Premiering during the Disney Channel's free preview, January 31st through February 3rd. You can't change the world, but you can change the way you live. Like serving more Dan and yogurt to you and your family. You see where the world is filled with stress. Dan and is filled with calcium, potassium, and real yogurt cultures. Where the world is relentless, Dan and is relaxing, rejuvenating. So while you can't change the world, your life is in your hands. Make Dan and Yogurt a very healthy habit for life. What's the worst part of treating your worst colds? A cold medicine that leaves me spacey. Oh, it's the cold medicine that can zonk me out. I hate that. It's like I'm off in the ozone somewhere. Groggy, spacey. Introducing Sudafed Severe Cold Formula. If it could help stop the cough and the fever, but not stop me from getting to work, that'd be great. First Sudafed cough, cold, and flu tablet, and it has nothing but maximum strength ingredients. All that and it won't knock me out? Perfect. New Sudafed Severe Cold Formula. Maximum strength without drowsiness. Next time you need a hotel, think twice. Embassy Suites. Two big rooms, one big suite. Embassy Suites. A place to work, a place to play. Embassy Suites. Breakfast is free, evening beverages too. Embassy Suites. Think twice. Twice the hotel. Call 1-800-EMBASSY. Excuse me, do you know what stock options are? I wish I did. When is a weak dollar good for business? Good? I don't know. The world of finance and investing can be pretty confusing, unless you call for this, the Wall Street Journal's Video Guide to Money and Markets. It explains the markets in clear, simple English and brings them to light. This exclusive 30-minute video is free when you call for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal. 
for just $37, over 20% off the newsstand price. Subscribe to the journal and get a daily view of the whole world of business and how it affects you. Information you know you should know. Call now and you'll be ready next time someone asks you. Are munis always a safe investment? I'm not sure. Call toll-free 800-942-3200 for 13 weeks of the Wall Street Journal and your free video on money and markets. That's 800-942-3200. Travelers with extreme weight problems could face humiliation if they try to take an airline flight. That was the experience of two Southwest Airline passengers who have filed a lawsuit after being forced to pay for an extra seat. Diane Diaz has that story. Pamela Holowich admits she's a large woman, 5'6 and 350 pounds. But she says that's no reason for an airline to force her to buy a second ticket in order to fly. They said that I needed two seats that I was fat and then I needed two seats to get on, you know, to, to be allowed to fly. It happened on Southwest Airlines in August of 1990. Pamela was flying from LAX to Chicago with a layover in Phoenix. But Southwest wouldn't let her reboard the plane in Phoenix until she paid $150 for an extra seat. Now Pamela is suing the airline. This was, this was my worst nightmare. I was crying. I was humiliated. I was in tears. They took away my civil rights. It was, it was probably the worst experience in my life. Pamela decided to go public with her story after hearing about a similar lawsuit filed last Friday in Phoenix, Arizona. That lawsuit is also against Southwest Airlines. Richard Kaufman, who weighs 365 pounds, says he was already on board a Southwest flight leaving Phoenix when he was taken off the plane because of his size. I was in the back of the plane. I walked out from the whole plane with four police officers. Need I say more? I mean, how, how much people were grumbling in the aisles. I could hear them as plain as day, all right, saying things like, uh, what did this guy do? What's he doing? You know, like, I tell you, I felt like a terrorist. Richard filed a lawsuit seeking $150,000 from Southwest Airlines. Pamela is asking about the same. But she says it's not about money. To her, it's human dignity. And she wants Southwest to be held accountable for the way it treats overweight passengers. No one, no one should go through this. No one should be humiliated in public. No, there should, in some way, the airline should work with you because there, this is not, it's not right. Southwest Airlines did refund Pamela's $150 for the extra seat, but the airline declined to settle the lawsuit out of court, and the airline has not commented on the case. Diane Diaz, Channel 4 News, West Los Angeles. Many people can't afford to fly these days as they try to ride out these tough times. And many credit card holders are also holding back on purchases, in part because of high interest rates at the banks. Well, now Jim Cummins has the story of how a small bank is doing very well, thank you, luring customers in with cheap rates. Simmons First National. One moment, sir. Pine Bluff, Arkansas is a small city, 60,000 people. Simmons First National with a telephone system that is on the verge of That's a meltdown. Right. Simmons First National. Because the biggest bank in town charges the lowest interest rate of any bank card in America, 8.5%. The way it looks, yes, sir, it's going to be, you know, pretty much eight and a half for, for a while. And each day, this bank gets 22,000 telephone calls from people wanting to get a piece of that action. OK, this application will go out in the mail to you tomorrow. It's easy to understand why so many people want a low-rate bank card from this small city in Arkansas. Call it the double whammy. The interest rates banks pay on savings accounts have plunged to about 4%, while the rates many of them collect on bank cards remain high, between 18 and 20%. So everybody is trying to get the Simmons First National Bank card, or at least it seems that way. Under state law, Arkansas banks can only charge 5% over the federal discount rate, which is at its lowest point since 1964. So how does this bank make a profit when the out-of-state banks are charging 18 to 20% interest? Uh, we do not and cannot and will not take the credit risk that other institutions throughout the nation uh, have been willing to do. 
That means only 20% of the card applicants get the low-rate card. They often use it for big-ticket items. Belinda Matthews bought a ring. When I opened up my statement, I said, $14, you've got to be kidding. Only periodically does this little bank in Arkansas take out-of-state applications for its credit card. Linda Silby says, thank goodness. No, sir, we did this again back in 86, and our boss swore it would not be like it was back then. It's worse. You need to call another number for an application. Jim Cummins, NBC News, Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Sounds great, but if you'd like to get your application in, you better start dialing now. The number is 501-541-1000. But it's always busy. We've been trying and trying. That's 501-541-1000. Good luck getting those rates. Well, if you're searching for the latest in new technology, then you're in the right place. Richard Hart is always on the road to the future. And now he's come across the next step in robots. It's artificial muscle. It was developed by an inventor who managed to come up with something that has eluded robot designers around the world. Stop right there. This robotic arm is special for two reasons. One, it works the same way a human arm or leg works. No gears or pulleys. Two, it was invented by one man, not NASA or some multinational R&D lab. Richard Wassum is a part-time inventor who wanted to help a friend who had lost a leg in Vietnam. His tinkering recently won him a U.S. patent. When, when this muscle here pulls, it's pulling, the mu this exhaust valve is opening and letting this one expand while this one contracts. Just as muscles pull and push against each other in a human arm, the black tubes work against each other. They expand as artificial blood is pumped in and out. Actually, ordinary water. The muscles are made of rubber hose held together at the ends by nylon braids. The robot's wrist moves independently from its elbow. Wassum calls these Wassum modules. Because there's just rubber, nylon, and water, Wassum says a large limb like this can be made for less than $100, including labor. But does it take a complicated computer to run it? Wassum's programmer is an 11-year-old boy, his son, Pascal. He went and got balloons, and he put the balloons under his shirt and had me inflate them, and when I saw that, I realized we were on the right, right track. The next step is for Wassum and his partner, Lon, to mount four of these, like legs, on a table that can walk by itself. That's never been done before. Wassum envisions automobile plants filled with such robots. So far, no manufacturer has shown an interest, though something he blames on the not-invented-here syndrome. Somewhere, Tom Edison is smiling. For NBC News, I'm Richard Hart. Incredible. That's all for now. I'm Janice Lieberman. For all of us here at Steals and Deals, thanks for joining us. And remember, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. We leave you now with a look at low-fat ostriches. Yes, ostriches, which are being raised at an ostrich farm in Columbia, South Carolina because of their low cholesterol meat. We'll see you next time.